fast, but she said that she can slow her down when she needs to, but loves the energy so far. Well, he's going to get energy out of that freshman class. And Brunel with a quick flip up. Looks like Virginia's got energy to the opening basket. It's a crafty quick lay-in for Caden Lawson. Well, how about that to start your season? And that's a great way to start it. Coach Mock said Caden Lawson has been improving every week during this preseason. And that's something that you're going to see her getting out in the lanes and pushing it in transition. George Washington had the sixth worst offense in points per game last year in all of Division I, and they're not off to a hot start. Cameron Taylor in the way with the block. Cameron Taylor is a name that I'm sure most are excited about seeing out on the court this year. Played about half of the season last year, and so they're excited to see what she's able to bring. She led the team in scoring when she was playing. Asia Ennis. Quick cross, no call, missed the shot, rebound Virginia. Cavaliers, their first set offense of the season. Carol Miller, one of a whole host of returning players from an abysmal 2021-22 season. Valade. George Washington knows how to rebound the basketball. They're going quick on offense and a three. Bottom. Relax, Stigala, the transfer. Quiet assassin is what Coach McCombs called her. She's going to be able to score in a variety of ways, and that's just one of them. Already that sorely needed shooting for George Washington provided by one of the newcomers. Relax, Stigala was highlighted as a potential breakout player this season. Valaday, a turnover. And a foul from the senior. And that has to be frustrating this early on in the game, just giving the ball to the other team. But we know that this offense has had struggles in the past, being turnover prone, averaged 19 turnovers last season. Uh, an aspect of their offense that is going to need to change in order for them to see success this season. Turn the ball over 504 times last year, Virginia. If that sounds like a lot, it is. It's the fifth most in D1 had the worst assist to turnover ratio, so not a promising start for Valade. Iowa Taiwo back for Asia Innes. Two player game and into the basket itself, Asia Innes for their first bucket of the season. Virginia started fast, but has stagnated a bit. Quick jumper and the three to break the lock. Cameron Taylor. That's a part of a game we have not seen yet. And in a Virginia jersey, I should say. We've been able to see her in the paint in battle, but if she can get open and knock down three points, that's going to add a whole nother dimension. But George Washington able to provide the response. Some question about whether Brunel would be in that starting lineup you just saw coming off a shoulder surgery. She is in the 33 in white. Here's Taylor in the post, but turned it over with a walk. The turnover bug biting again for Virginia. George Washington, while so many new additions. Question about who would be in the starting lineup in the first place. Ennis and Lax Degala transferring into the program this season. Thing. The offensive foul on Maya Wataiwo, who is not a new addition. She was fantastic last season, over eight points and rebounds per game. Yeah, led the team in rebounds per game and talked to Coach McCombs, who said that she's excited for what she's going to be able to do this season, Taiwo, at that free throw line. We saw her just pick up a charge, but she's going to have more guards around her that can do more. Cameron Taylor keeps her feet on the ground this time and finds a bucket, her second, 7-7. Seven, seven. Early doors between George Washington and Virginia. Iowa going to have her hands full defensively. Virginia with a more accomplished front court, even though Mayor McLean not available yet this season after a thumb surgery. Long ball. Brown missed it. Here comes Valade. And another turnover for Valade. Picked by Lax Degala behind the back. Lax Degala off the front of the rim. Those offensive boards crucial for the Colonels. Ennis had space for the floater, missed it. Brunel flies in, and it's Virginia ball. You can tell that both of these.
these teams are playing with a heightened energy, maybe a little bit of excitement. Obviously, it's the first game of the season, Zeeland, but both of these teams are going to have to find some composure on the offensive end in regards to taking care of the ball and taking good shots. As we see three players for Virginia come out and take a break. Virginia shooting far better, but has as many turnovers as field goals made. Loose feed into the post that is collected and put home by Caden Lawson. It's going to be interesting to see how more composed she is under Coach Mox, giving her quite a few roles, playing two through four positions. And it's got lost down low, but draws the foul. Transfer from Northwest Florida State College. She's at her third school in three years. That's just the modern trend of the game, and she's hoping she's found a home at Foggy Bottom. Yeah, that transfer portal, it opens up some options for you. We have a few players in the ACC who are on their third stop as well. And, I mean, it just, it, it just expands the opportunities. It allows you to get a taste of basketball in different leagues. Obviously, the ACC being one of the best. But here at GW, they are really looking for some power that Ennis has in her offense. As Coach McCombs said, she's looking for people that have, have played college basketball before, that know what the experience is about, the, the workload, and aren't going to, to be overawed by the moment. And has spent her freshman season in Division I at North Carolina A&T, so she has that experience. Also made both of her free throws. Off the side, and Virginia gets the offensive rebound, draws a foul as well. That's the first involvement for London Clarkson this season. London Clarkson got a good amount of playing time last season. She came off the bench often, but always looks to drive, looks for her shot when she's in that free throw line area as well. Foul was on Jayla Thornton, who is one of those new players trying to add shooting for George Washington. Virginia had a really rough year last year, but they have a lot of players coming back from that team. You see the production coming back. And the only thing they really missed out on is the three-point shooting. That's the question for Virginia. Can they shoot without Amandine Twa on this team? Yeah, Twa was a big piece of that and just all, how aggressive she was with her three-point shooting at times. But like we said, some new faces in here, a new system to look to get other people open and maybe some more open shots out there on the perimeter. Mike Segala trying for the step back three. Fouls on George Washington, so Virginia will keep hold. It's Brown picking up her first foul. And we see a new face here bringing up the ball, Yanta Vaughn. She is a freshman backup to Taylor Valaday, who coach is very excited about. So she's got a smooth handle, pass first point guard. Certainly seems comfortable bringing it up the floor and not under too much duress. This George Washington defense starting to tighten up a bit. If you're Coach Mox, what are you looking for in your first game in charge of a program that, that did struggle so mightily, 5-22 and 22 last year? Yeah, I think it's discipline right off the bat. You know, you work all summer long, all preseason long on, on a few things to get ready for this first week, this first stretch of games before you get into non-conference or conference play, I should say. And so it's going to be buckling down and doing exactly what they have been working on. She doesn't want to see leaps of, of, of excellence or anything like that, but just doing the little things. Pushing and transition is one of them. The trying to, the pass a bit too tall for six-foot McKinney Dale. And so it's back with Lax Tagala. Now open for Jayla Thornton, and that's what she does best. Jayla Thornton, she is a shooter. She is what Coach Becomes talked about. In that Princeton offense, she's going to be out on the, on the three-point line. She's going to be in the paint at times, but she's always looking for her shot. Injury really stifled her one season at Syracuse, but she made 275 threes at Howard. That's a ton. The drive from the freshman is too strong. Vaughn will have to wait for her first basket, and George Washington has the lead in the ball. Max Tagala fouled. Caden Lawson got a piece of her, but Jayla Thornton adding the three-point shooting for George Washington. Lauren, this is what the Colonels absolutely... Trying to do a little rebuilding of its own under Coach McCombs. Struggled a bit in A-10 play, but ended the season on a high note, Lauren, and something that Coach McCombs thought they could carry forward into this year. 
Yeah, it started on defense, obviously, but offensively, you know, she said balls just were not going through the hoop for them. And so they add a few players that are just more offensive-minded, and she said they can pick up the defense later on, but really, they need to put more points on the board, and they're doing just that here in the first quarter. The offense scored just under 52 points a game last season. Jayla Thornton searching for her second bucket and a blocking foul. Might have been inside the circle, but Valade certainly got the worst part of that exchange. Yeah, it looks like she slid over to take a charge after that backdoor cut. Sam Brunel got a little high on that cut and couldn't make up for it. Valade stepped in, but picked up a foul herself. Thornton, unsurprisingly, a tremendous free throw shooter. is going to have an opportunity as George Washington has entered the bonus. That is an announcer's jinx if I've ever seen one. <laughs> sure, she'd be happy with her start to her George Washington career. Got the first three-pointer out of the way in the opening quarter and does sink the second free throw to stretch the lead to three. Certainly a feeling from Coach McCombs talking to her a few days ago that this is a team that has a chance to put together not only a winning season, but a season that can contend against an A-10 that has been thrown into disarray after last year they were playing a bunch of settled teams quick turn from Brunel no but that's the opportunity Lauren is that they've got teams that don't have the same core they were facing a year ago in the A-10 yep and, and for the most part they returned a lot of their players they they have only two I believe that were actually producing at a high rate that they had to make up for and it looks like they've been able to do that with the new faces and both teams able to return a good number of their players unusual Vaughn still looking for her first career bucket off to the side. I already showed you Virginia's returning numbers. This is what it looks like for George Washington. It's even better than the Cavaliers in terms of returning production. And Jayla Thornton's going for another bucket. She is new production, and she's already got herself six points in this game. Another offensive rebound for GW to do something with. They almost get a third bite of the apple, but it's gone out of bounds off the fingertips of Nia Robertson. Have to be happy with this start on the George Washington bench. The offense more alive than it was last year, and Virginia's hit a bit of a snag, hasn't scored in a few minutes. Yeah, George Washington doing a good job of just taking what the defense is giving them. You know, they have taken about 15 shots so far, but a lot of them have been uncontested. Three offensive rebounds in this opening quarter as well. Step back three. Caden Lawson. She can be dangerous for this Virginia squad. Coach Mock said it. When she plays hard, that is when they are at their best. And if she can just knock down shots or get the ball into the paint and be able to score that way, I think that's going to boost her confidence as well as getting her to play some defense, Coach Mock said. But here you go. Coming off the screen, nobody's in her face, and she just takes it. Average 4.3 points a game last year. She has seven. Now feeding the post as Taylor behind the defense. The one in, four out has been working. They get the ball inside, and they're able to knock it down with a clean layup right there. But I'm interested to see how, if, you know, George Washington, known for doubling in the post, if they do that, then what is UVA's next step going to be? Was a big emphasis talking with the teams how George Washington would defend the post, what the resources they would commit to it. Nia Robertson has missed her second three from the corner. This is a physical rebounding battle on this end of the floor. Brunel's come out with it. Vaughn through two. What a pass, Taylor. Beautiful execution and transition. The first attempt from Sam Brunel wasn't there. Gets it to her guard, and she just dumps it off. So beautiful. That is what a pass first point guard looks like. But Lax Tagala wastes no time. The offense has been all the transfers. Couple of buckets for Thornton and Lax Tagala in the opening quarter. Taylor, missed pass, bounces to Vaughn. Brunel. Virginia's second offensive rebound of this quarter. Offensive foul on Lawson. That 
aggression she's shown so far finally came back to bite her. Yeah, I don't know if she's excited or happy about that one, but the energy that she had to go take the rebound from her own teammate and try to get it back up there was quite impressive. Looks like we have an exciting game on our hands. 17-17 and a walk. Nifty move, but one too many steps in there for Nia Robertson. Going ju just a little too fast, like Coach McCombs said might be the case. George Washington doing a good job of getting the ball into the paint with that drive. Taylor again, Cameron Taylor. Have yourself a quarter. She's just bodying her way in the paint. If you're going to be physical with her, she's going to give you something back. And she did in a bucket. Mike Sigala trying to answer the call again. Missed it. Rebound Lawson. Taylor has 11. Last shot will be to Virginia. Vaughn, the freshman, with the ball. Vaughn blocked. And that should do it. It does do it. 19-17, thanks to Cameron Taylor. Virginia's got a two-point lead at home in the opening game of the season. Five of six, and she's just been doing the work in the best way possible. Her return to Virginia has been highly anticipated. By some margin in this game, it'll be tough to keep that pace up, of course. George Washington scoring at a much higher clip and they were last season, but still shot just 32% in the first quarter. Virginia shot 50%. Uh, turned the ball over five times. Didn't see a lot of Taiwo in the opening quarter. She sets the screen, tries to get it back, turned over. Pass disrupted, but now Brunel has her pocket picked from behind, and it's Innes. Plays off two feet, blocked by Brunel. The hustle from the graduate transfer. That was a great hustle from Tywell off of that, off of the turnover. She was able to pick the pocket of Brunel to really get that transition going. Two veteran forwards sprinting back and up down the floor against each other. Really nice energy for an opening night game. Free ball, too strong. Vaughn with the rebound. Second three ball for Taylor. Missed it, Brunel, towering offensive board, but Taiwo takes it away. She's still running. Taiwo, everything but the finish, Virginia ball. Man, the ability to take that off the rim and push it in transition is just quite insane to see from Taiwo. But here, Cameron Taylor gets up in the air, but she times it up so perfectly and able to just get that block off. There is a size advantage for Virginia. Cameron Taylor, part of that, she's 6'2". Brunel also 6'2", who was flying back into the picture. George Washington will not put a player on the floor tonight that's going to get over six foot. Taylor, certainly confident, but missed her first couple in this second quarter. Yeah, that looked like a play breakdown for Virginia. Strong drive and a foul on Essence Brown, Virginia native. The fouls on London Clarkson, that's her first. It's going to be interesting to see this team, this Virginia team, grow throughout the season. We know that they have had their fair share of adversity over the past few years now, but under a new head coach who really is just focused on the present and the future, she said. She said she didn't really watch too much of what Virginia did last season because she's focused on newness, new energy, positivity, and just getting back to winning. She was a very hot coaching prospect out of Missouri State, had them humming. They were fantastic the last three years. So she, she said when Virginia called, it was, it was no debate. She loved Missouri State, but this is her dream school. She grew up in Northern Virginia. Quick shot off the side of the rim. Offensive boards again and again and nearly again. It is snatched away by Carol Miller, Virginia. Rebounds of killing both of these teams, actually. Coach McCollum said that they needed to make sure they protect the paint, and rebounds right now for Virginia offensively have been getting the job done. 
determined shooting from Katie Pauley. She hasn't been able to sink one yet. Now a foul. Cameron Taylor, it's not just the points. She has her fingerprints all over this game. Rebounding is something she's known for as well. She averaged rebound. Uh, she averaged 8.9 rebounds last season. Already has five in this game. Just notched consecutive rebounds. Pauley, the freshman to inbound. Gets it back, set the screen for her. What a pass by Katie Pauley and Cameron Taylor's going to the line. That's also something Coach Mox mentioned. Katie Pauley, she is diverse in her ways of playing. At that point guard position, she can play off the wing, but her passing is what Coach Mox says is phenomenal. It's the first thing out of her mouth about Katie Pauley. Well, how's she play? Oh, she has flair. <laughs> She said it's deceptive flair. You play against her, and she plays with a straight face. You don't expect it. And then she pulls a rabbit out of a hat. That's the quote yeah. from Coach Mox. And that'll pair well in the ACC. Obviously, she's a young player. I'm sure a lot to learn and a lot to improve on. But if you're a great passer and you can see the floor coming in off the bench, that just adds a renowned sense of, of, of newness to the court. And if things don't dip off when your starting five comes out, that's a great sign as well. This is a huge step up in competition for Katie Pauley. Comes from Milan, Missouri, small town two hours north of St. Louis. Taiwo able to get herself on the board with a bucket. But Pauley scored 33 a game her senior season. That, I, I didn't stutter. Vaughn, her first career bucket, the other freshman. The assist from Katie Pauley, and Virginia leads by three. Backup point guard able to knock it down as well. That is a sweet sound, I'm sure, as a freshman to see your three ball go through the net. Vaughn, Vaughn didn't average 33 points a game, but she was the 72nd ranked prospect on the ESPN 100. Taylor Webster. Searching and searching, and she searched too long. The defense from Pauley turns it over. Virginia, the lead in the ball. And we've seen Webster do that in previous years, especially with George Washington from the wing. She likes that spin move, but couldn't get it off against Pauley. Her second season now with George Washington as Taylor will get a breather, a much-deserved breather. And we've seen quite the rotation from this front court between Clarkson, Brunel, Taylor. Brunel, elbow, no, still looking for her first bucket. This time, George Washington, Colonials squeeze the rebound. Brown, in and out. Second chance points are huge for George Washington, and they've got a third shot at this one. Lock hits it. We're tied. And they're making it count. Five offensive rebounds for George Washington right now. Both of these teams struggling on the boards, and both of them are taking advantage of it. Coach Agugua Hamilton wants to talk about it, all those offensive rebounds, and tie this game up. Virginia, George Washington in a tight one. And she's able, she's a family woman, so she wants to keep her family close, but she also wants this team to feel like they're part of it as well. Those cookouts, and she said they went, they went, they went picking, but she wasn't quite sure what they went picking for. I thought it was apples, might have been apples. She said it could have been, been something else. <laughs> she said it was a bit of a whirlwind, right when she got here. Could have been strawberries. Be honest, I couldn't tell either. That's a turnover for George Washington. Something they've kept down in the first quarter, kind of popped up in the second. About three turnovers in this quarter. Coach Mox. She, she was reminded when she got the offer to come coach of Virginia of the great teams of the past that she remembered watching Don Staley, championship-level teams. Yeah. I mean, she has a history herself. First African-American female head coach of any sport at Missouri State. 
and obviously we talked about the success she's had there, but that's exactly what she wants to bring here. She's seen these players like Dawn Staley, Wendy Palmer, Tammy Reese perform at the highest levels and also win at these high levels as well. And, you know, she coached with Wendy Palmer during her time at VCU, so she knows her a bit. She says she has a great relationship with her and, and just loves the family and the camaraderie that she's been able to feel since attending and, and being able to come to Virginia. That was just, the, I mean, it was the first thing out of her mouth when you talked about coming to Virginia. Well, how's the family feel? The family loves it. Yep. And definitely a place that if she's able to find the same success she found at Missouri State, she could make a very long-term home of it. Quick step back. Lax Degala keeps getting hers. We're tied at 26. Lax Degala is very comfortable. 50% from the field so far. Hasn't really struggled to see the ball go in. Pass trying to get it to Pauly, but it's taken away by a lock after the deflection swept out by Vaughn. Great effort, great energy. You love to see that from a freshman. That that tells you and shows you, you know, where their head is at this first half of the game. She she doesn't give up on the play, turns the ball over, but is the first person down and without fouling is able to really make a defensive play. <laughs> Nia Locke certainly thought there might have been a foul there, but Vaughn will go in the book with a clean play. Trying to get her hand on the ball again. She does. It'll stay with George Washington. It's a tricky spot for Thornton to throw this in. Does find Lax Degala. Nia Locke, who had a career-high 26 in a game against Virginia last year. A monster performance from her. She has three so far today. Looking for Bleffin. Pass turned over Vaughn. All alone. She will go alone and nearly finds the basket. Foul on the rebound. Yeah, and she's just got to get out of her head a little bit. Just a little bit of power to get that ball up and over the rim. But George Washington able to make it hard for her down there in transition. They've seen Virginia push it out before and been successful. But this time they're trying to change things up a little bit. Fouls on Brunel, her first. Max Tagala in a bit of a pickle. Able to hand off to Locke, draws the foul, and one. Nia Locke. Big bucket there for Locke. I'm sure she's excited. She thought the last time she went up, it should have been a foul. But this time, she's able to clean, come clean right off that handoff and get to her spot and elevate. Took the knock for McKenna Dale. It's her first foul, Nia Locke. Long journey to get to George Washington. She's an Aussie from Melbourne. Had to play two years of junior college ball in Texas before getting the chance to come to George Washington and was a significant role player last season. Obviously against Virginia last year, a very significant role player. Missed shot from Carol Miller has been quiet so far. Nia Locke has not. Here she goes again. Locke with the skill. Talk about giving something that they didn't have before. Pushing it out in transition, going to the basket hard. Only five points, but those five points have really given GW their momentum in this quarter. Well, that bucket takes her to seven. Nia Locke has awakened. Spinning, whirling move from Cameron Taylor's come up short. And George Washington's looking to run. Lax Degala weasels her way into the paint and scores. The drives for the Colonials have been fantastic. And George Washington has jumped all over Virginia in Charlottesville. Six-point lead when we come back. Nia Locke. You wouldn't believe me if I told you she wasn't an every game starter if you just watched her highlight tape against Virginia. This is fancy. Found one in the top drawer. She got real jiggy with it for that drive. 5'11 guard, so she has the size to be able to play inside and out. But when she's coming downhill, she's hard to stop. She was a baller those two years at Midland College in Midland, Texas. Dropped 14 and 7 per game. So those numbers go down moving up to Division I, but she still has that talent and that swagger should she need it. 
Tough time for Cameron Taylor, but keeps possession for Virginia. Yeah, we see the defense amped up a little bit in the paint. Cameron Taylor got it pretty easy there in the first quarter, but two blue jerseys around her when she caught the ball in the paint this time. Dale gets a look and hits. McKenna Dale, she is known to be a shooter first, but she wasn't shooting very well last season, trying to get her confidence up with every shot, and she's able to sink one. She is somebody that really could be a bigger scorer for Virginia than she has been. A transfer that came from Brown after three seasons there. She scored 17 points a game in Ivy League play in the 2019-2020 season. Has not found that kind of form at Virginia thus far. This is her final year of eligibility. Another, Another offensive, offensive rebound. rebound. Oh, yep. Same thought, Lauren. It's, <laughs> it's really, it's what we talked about before the game, and it's just happening anyways. Yep. And George Washington makes it work. Second chance points. Second chance points is exactly what Coach Mox is going to be telling her team. It's biting them in the butt right now. offensive rebounds for George Washington in the game and a foul on Carol Miller. It's been hectic on both boards. Virginia, it's credit where it's due with the seven offensive rebounds, but for the height advantage for Virginia and that post advantage that we expected Virginia to try to exploit, George Washington has four more rebounds overall. Yeah, it's like every time George Washington shoots a ball, all the white jerseys run straight straight to the rim instead of putting a body on someone and pushing them out. Essence Brown misses the shot, going to get her own rebound, but this time Cameron Taylor, uh, she says, nah, uh I've got this one. She's well on pace for a double-double, but she walked with it. Going a little bit too fast for her own good. Virginia trying to find a flow here on offense. The inside out is good. Coach is telling her, calm down. Take what the defense has given you. Quick drive for Nia Robertson. Too quick, had her shot blocked, but Virginia turns it over trying to secure the rebound. Robertson settles the possession down. Jayla Thornton pull up three. Missed it. Vaughn rebound. McKenna Dale off her own foot. Haven't seen Brunel get a basket yet. She's somebody that can score in bunches. Running off the screen with Taylor. Brunel the option on the backside. Dale with a ball fake. This time misses the jumper, and George Washington looking to run again. Jayla Thornton has the green light from anywhere, but she's missed. Taylor. Well, we can't say this game's lacking pace. <laughs> they are getting those shots up as soon as they get down the, down the court. You know, Virginia tried to get into a set towards the end of their shot clock last time down, but wasn't able to capitalize off of just taking their time and GW answered back with a three-pointer. Missed it, but shots are going up, Zeeland. <laughs> they are. This is more offense than perhaps we expected, certainly more pace than we expected in this game, and then we will see in the second game of this doubleheader when Virginia's men's team takes the floor. Brunel gets her chance at an isolation. Brunel, wild shot, and she sticks it. She finally sinks one at home in Charlottesville in front of her family, I'm sure, and friends. Probably excited to see that one go down, head into halftime, and, and try to do some more work out here for Virginia to pull off this win. Had herself a big-time career at Notre Dame, but grew up just 16 miles away from Charlottesville. Shoot it before the end of the clock, and it'll be Jayla Thornton who misses again, but an offensive rebound for Tylo. Wonder if it counts for the stats, but George Washington will go into the half floor with a, a four-point lead over Virginia in a big second quarter. Oh, not it's no it's, I've gotten the word from those that are watching the clock in my ear. There's 3.8 seconds left. I knew that. I said it a few minutes ago. Just a little, just a little difference. <sighs> One horn to the other. <laughs> I was so ready and excited to talk about this first half, but Virginia could change some of the narrative. Shot up still with two seconds left. I'm not the only one a little confused by the clock, but it is halftime now. 
34-30. And I'm sure this time George Washington leads, Lauren, and it's been an impressive performance from the Colonials. Yeah, you won scoring, Coach McCombs. This is what you've got. Going into the half with a four-point lead from Thornton A out on the wing. We've got Engel and we're right now. Obviously, Virginia with a new head coach, so they're trying to figure out what their scheme is going to be and how to put their best players in the best position. On the other hand, hand George Washington has some new faces, but at the, at the end of the day, they're really running a Chen or, or Princeton set, so it's a lot of cuts, a lot of reads that you have to become accustomed two over time. A lot of returning players certainly helps that be the case. Webster driving in, dished it, but after committing an offensive foul. Saw Taylor get tripped up there. I was holding my breath that she didn't go for that ankle that I had just mentioned. Yeah. The ankle that we were just suspicious of. Injuries are a story in this game. We didn't get to it much in the first half, but both teams are actually missing very important players. Virginia's missing Mary McLean. She was the second leading scorer. She had a thumb surgery. She's expected to be back soon. George Washington. They're missing Cheslaney Loriano, who was the leading scorer for them last year. Expected back later in the season, but she did not make the trip. Kaya Loving didn't make the trip either. Only a couple hour drive. Sharp drive there from Virginia, but rebounded by Taiwo. Step back, confidence for Webster. She has her first bucket. And that's some range to Webster's game we haven't seen since last year. But an immediate response from Virginia. Harold Miller desperately needed to get involved in this game. Yeah, you know, we talked about pace in the first half, and both of these teams, when they get a shot, a wide-open shot in the half court, they're taking it early into that shot clock. Tipped out to Ennis. Working against Valade, who went silent in that second quarter after a couple of turnovers. Shot for Brown, and she has had a, a rough start to this game. Now one for seven. Yeah, you mentioned Taylor Valaday. She she hasn't been able to get it going as well, also with fouls and turnovers. But here we see Mira McLean, who was the UConn transfer, that mid-season transfer, and her energy right off the bat in that first game was something that was indescribable and exciting, obviously, to fans to watch. And I'm sure they cannot wait to get her back here suited up for the Cavaliers. Having a full offseason to be with the team as well, so important. You mentioned she transferred mid-season, played for UConn and Virginia last year. The hustle for Valade, and she converts. That is what Valade needed. She needed to see the ball go through the hoop. She needed to hustle to get the ball through the hoop as well. And we know when she's amped up, she can change the dynamic of a game. Like Sigala misses. A lot of credit to Caden Lawson for getting that ball out of the... Uh, the seats, it seems, but the aggression immediately, immediately apparent for Valade as she attacks the rack. When she's upset, when she's happy, she's just going to play hard. First half didn't go her way, but here she gets off after the ball first and goes right to the basket and puts it in. Finishing through the contacts and now finding herself at the free throw line. Cameron Taylor who has scored oh so many points in this game, played with Valaday at Marquette. They both played there for two seasons and transferred to Virginia together. Now entering their second year as part of the program. Valaday with nine and a half points per game last season. Actually went up to 11 and a half points per game in ACC play last year. Yeah, she's just an aggressive guard, aggressive point guard, I'd say, as well. You know, we talked about her backup and Vaughn and, and her being a, a pass first. Valaday's going to look to score first, and that's what we've seen in the past two, two times down. It'd be good to have that balance in a team. Essence Brown searching for the basket, still can't find it. Lawson wasting no time, missed it. To end stuff continues. Ennis, bounce pass, tough finish. Yeah, it looks like the coaches on the bench, they were hoping for that whistle blow, but for her to be able to get the ball in the net with that much contact, impressive. 
Pace of the game not slowing down even for a moment. Taiwo converted just her second field goal of the game with that fast break layup. And now Virginia is going to get a couple more free throws. Carol Miller is headed to the line. Fouls on Essence Brown. It's her second. Anything different you've noticed to start this second half? Because George Washington really did own the second quarter. Yeah, no, they did. I think that they have still had the momentum, if you ask me. I, we saw Virginia knock down two buckets um, when they needed to. But defensively, they haven't been able to stop what George Washington has been doing. And they've been getting the ball off the rim and going down in transition. Fans of statistical symmetry will enjoy the fact that both these teams are shooting 34% right now. So it hasn't been a clean game shooting-wise. That was a lovely pass from Locke that was disrupted fabulously by Carol Miller. And Carol Miller can be sneaky. She She's obviously on the offensive end a slasher, but defensively, she tries to get in those passing lanes and just make a difference. She has some knee issues that she's always been struggling with, but she tries to make her impact felt whenever she is out on the court. Coach Mox summed it up. She's a tough kid that's pushing through those knee issues to, to contribute to this team, and it's hard to say how valuable, it's hard to overstate how valuable it is to have somebody that is essentially played every game, started all but four games since joining the program, now a senior, but play has been stopped as Cameron Taylor. It's not the ankle. She took a blow up high. Yeah. And, you know, aside from Miller, you know, being able to push through on the court, off the court, you know, she's just been a leader. She's obviously a senior, has the most experience or some of the most experience in this program. And so the fact that she's able to push her own things to the side at times and just put the team first has been also very impressive from Coach Mock's stance. A word that Cameron Taylor got hit in the eye. So we'll see how quickly she might be able to return. Locke feeling it from deep. Miss rebound Carol Miller, who has appeared in this second half in a big way. Validate flying in foul. She just makes you make difficult plays defensively. Oh, yeah. There wasn't quite a lane, but she's going to make you guard her. She's going to make you come up out of the paint. No one really stepped up and put a body in between her and the basket. And so if that's Taylor Validate, she's going to take that green light every single time. She's from Chicago, and they do not play outside the three-point arc in Chicago. The violence of this game is taking a toll on Virginia in the third quarter. A bloody finger for Carol Miller. Two of the seniors in this team needing a, some work from the medical staff to be able to get back into this game. The ref's taking a look at it. She's... Trying to dry it off. Well, you can tell both teams want these rebounds. We saw a lot of fouls, particularly in the first quarter, fighting for rebounds and a lot of collisions. The desire is there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fighting really hard. You know, they're, they're neck and neck with just about everything. Total rebounds, turnovers are the same, shooting percentage is the same. It's really going to come down to the final minutes, I assume. Wednesday, we'll have the men's soccer championship semifinals. More on that in a moment as Brunel's got an offensive board. Virginia has given, given Washington a taste of its own medicine. George Washington now evened up in the offensive rebound department by Virginia. Cavaliers looking for the lead. Miller missed it. Valaday, another offensive rebound. That was a fortunate one. Valaday. Flying in, fouled again. It's what she does. She's a vacuum for fouls. Yeah, you're trying to reach in there and steal the ball. She's got quick hands, and so she's not going to make it easy. But their lack of ball movement is starting to take a toll. You see Sam Burnell down there in the paint screaming for the ball as she posts up, hoping that her guards get her some touches. And her guards might just give her the lead. Validate with a pair at the line. 
missed a couple today. I was telling you about that men's soccer championship semifinals on Wednesday. It's third seed in Virginia, taking on second seed in Syracuse at 5 Eastern, then eighth seed in Clemson, who upset undefeated Duke in the quarters. Squaring off against the fourth seeded Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Both matches are on ACC Network in the ESPN app. The winners will meet in the championship match Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPNU. A little football for your trouble this week. So many sports going on right now. It is the golden part of the year, sports-wise. Thornton on the pull-up. Hasn't scored since the first quarter. It stays that way. Not shooting particularly well in her debut. Now Brunel from range. Sam Brunel, that's what she can bring to Virginia. Her first three for the season, or for the Cavaliers at least, but we know that that's what she likes to do. She can get hot from deep, and all she wanted was a few touches, and here we see it. A career 33% three-point shooter at 6-2. Thank you very much, Transfer Portal. Virginia leads. Sort of a hometown hero. We've seen and heard that on social media, but she's just an all-around competitor. Obviously, she grew up right in this town, about 16 miles away, came off the bench at Notre Dame, but as a freshman, she got ACC All-Freshman Team. She was the All-ACC -All preseason, and we've seen her grow at Notre Dame, but it's so nice to be able to see that all come together in Charlottesville. It's a real opportunity for her to find that form of her freshman year. She started every game for Notre Dame, Tylo powering through London Clarkson. But after that opening season, Brunel never started another game for Notre Dame. Still a big contributor off the bench, shot the ball very well. Speaking of shooting, Virginia unable to connect once again. That shooting percentage that was at 50% after the first quarter has faded. But Brunel, there's something to be said for coming home, especially when you're as hyped as you were. Sixth, uh, number six recruit in the country coming out of Rutgersville. And she is off to a decent start in her career. Five points. We'll be back. Virginia leads by two against George Washington in the curtain raising contest. The ACC is going to be fantastic to watch here all season long. The only conference with Five. <laughs> Five teams in the AP Top 25 poll. Obviously, every night in the ACC, you have to fight for a win, and that's going to continue this season. And as you can see, Virginia is trying to get off to a good start in non-conference play here against George Washington. Just making sure we were on the same wavelength there. Five teams in the top 15. I know. 15. I was hanging for a little bit. No, oh, you were there. I knew you were there. <laughs> Five in the top 15 is remarkable. Laxagala sticks the three. George Washington says, enough of that ACC nonsense. How about the Atlantic 10? Yeah, Lastigala, she would got quiet there uh, in the beginning of the third quarter, but we know that she started this game off hot and can be silent. A silent assassin. Kate Lawson prefers the loud kind. A loud swish of the net. Her three, her second of the game. Virginia leads by two. Brown. Finally. A sigh of relief for Essence Brown. Brunel now two for nine. Her. Yeah, and Brunel kind of baited her into that shot, and she was going to sink it. She said, if you're not going to come out and defend me, then I can prove myself. And she did. Those are all, you know, the old pickup game rules right there. Brunel has a crowd around her, pulls up, and rolls it home. She likes that little turn into the middle for a little floater or fall away shot, I guess I should say, especially when she has someone shorter on her. Not seen Taylor come back since getting hit in the eye. Brunel going to have to fill those scoring shoes. Virginia is going to maintain its narrow lead. Naya Robertson. Ennis. Again, the shooting has awakened. Cannot help off of the ball side. I can't remember how many times we heard that from our coach in college of helping off the ball side. You have to let your post come over and take that. Taylor Valaday gave up a wide open three. Valaday tries to thread the needle to Clarkson, tipped out of play by Taiwo. Three, three straight trips with a made three-point field goal. 
Shooting has improved in this third quarter for both teams. Well, George Washington is still the better shooting team at 19 for 50 in the game. Tyler's back, and she's back. That is the bucket that they have been looking for from Taylor. Obviously, she's been able to get it done in other ways, but right here, Valade stays in that corner, and she goes one on two, sort of. Looked like she'd been itching to get back on the floor with that sort of determined move. She's got a stat line that would look good at the end of the whole game, and we still have more than a quarter left to play. Playing George very Washington. efficient right now. Pardon me. George Washington, four for its last four. Out of nowhere. Essence Brown. Ennis. No, rebound by Lax Tagala, the silent assassin again. A missed rebound or missed box out opportunity leads to two free throws for George Washington. Lax Tagala, the leading scorer in this game. She also has five rebounds. The fouls on Caden Lawson, it's notable. Her third foul could become a problem for one of Virginia's two double digit scorers in this game. Lax Tagala sticks the first. Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, the ACC Huddle crew will be in Syracuse to get you set for another full day of football. They'll also have halftime shows and pre- and post-game shows throughout the day. At 6.30, you get a complete wrap-up of the afternoon's games, and they'll get you set for the primetime matchup between Florida State and Syracuse on ACC Network at 8. It's all on ACC Network in the ESPN app. Dale taking the three and almost capped that nice little promo with a bucket. Instead, we're tied at 50, and Robertson has Lax Tagala. She normally makes these, but this time Virginia's bailed out by the mess. Brunel, smart to save it. I was curious. No numbers there. Is she going to shoot it? Because you know Caden Lawson loves that three, and I'm sure that the players on the bench were joking her for that just now. Now she pulls. Missed it. Ennis. It's a rebound. Ennis has been all over this game in her first, the Colonials. Robertson, a great shooter in high school. It just hasn't translated in her first game here. Dale running the fast break. Dale, McKenna Dale. Pressing the ball up the floor. That's exactly what Coach Mox likes. Off the rebounds, off of turnovers. Don't look, just go. Run in transition and get easy buckets. Coach Agugua Hamilton said that they wanted to get out in the break, put the pressure on George Washington in those situations. Brown in and out. Tylo fouled by Cameron Taylor. Great box oh. out down there, but Dale pushing out in front and keeping the ball in pretty high dribbles, which can be hard to try to pick out. And she just finishes at the basket. Former U18 New Zealand international has dual citizenship between the U.S. and New Zealand. Mentioned her prolific scoring at Brown. What must feel like another life now. She's been at Virginia for two seasons. Scored just 2.9 points per game last year, Dale. Certainly be looking for something better than that this year. And very capable of getting that. She thought 39% from three in her last year in the Ivy League. Currently trying to defend Lax Tagala, which has not been an easy task for anyone. Brown. Asia Innes. Tough shot. A rebound by Brunel. Great defense there from, Ta from Taylor Valade. She knows what Innes is like to do up until this point, and so she just Guards her very hard and gets a hand up in her face. Now, as if she knows she's been properly introduced, but just missed. Miller with the offensive rebound. Haven't those told the story of this game? Valaday. Tries to keep the foot down, but gave up her 
her jumping height in Taiwo. Easy block. Yeah, great defensive stop there. Taylor Valaday kind of predetermined what move she was going to make on her way to the basket, and defense Taiwo was able to just get that block out of here. Valaday has five seconds to shoot it. Gets by her defender. Valaday missed the layup. Taylor in for the rebound is fouled by Asia Ennis. Beautiful move. She just could not finish that. She fakes one way, gets her defender leaning, and takes advantage of it. But at least she has someone to clean it up for her. Cameron Taylor has been big on the boards, offensively, all around. She's just been doing everything that they need today. Nine rebounds, one assist, 16 points, shooting 50% from the floor. It's a great start to the season for her. And now four for four at the free throw line as well. She has a couple of steals, a couple of blocks rather, to complement that full lineup. She leads the team in points and rebounds tonight. They are into their set. Naya Robertson searching for her first collegiate basket, will not find it. Virginia with the rebound and it's a double-double. A double-double in three quarters for Cameron Taylor, and Virginia leads by four because of it. Well, Coach said that she was playing phenomenal in this preseason, but on the other end, Tywo has been able to finish. Her Glass, particularly for the Cavaliers. It's been a back and forth game. 12 lead changes so far, but like you said, Zeeland, it's been the rebounds. Virginia out rebounding the Colonials by seven right now. Out rebounded them by nine in that third quarter. Dale. Valade. A wide on three, and it drops. Clean stroke for Taylor Valade in Virginia's biggest lead of the game. And that's got her pumped. She's down there talking, ready to get a stop on defense. Virginia has been switching it up with the, with the matchups so far in this game, trying to keep them focused. Valade sets the tone for this defense, but nothing was stopping Taylor Webster. Is that That's called an up and under and up yeah, again? Is that the... like she does this whole 360, but it works for her. Valaday in attack mode and one. Valaday's in her zone now. When she can get downhill on consecutive plays, which we saw in the third quarter, when she comes out, she's going to be on fire. And right now they are calling plays. Coach Mock said she's not just going to be a distributor. She is going to have plays ran for her. And that is what we just saw in her able to knock it down through pressure. Struggled a bit at the free throw line, and that rears its ugly head again, but still influencing this game in a major positive way since that first quarter. Certainly a player that can score in bunches, has scored 30 points in a game before for Virginia. And she's on attack again, gets it to Brunel, who wrangles it in the nick of time. And one part two. The fans are loving it. This aggressive tandem between Taylor Valaday and Sam Brunel was perfection. She wobbled it a little bit, was able to ring it in and finish through contact. And that is the energy that Sam has been waiting to fill as a player in JPJ. Let's get the feeling when Valaday gets going, she can take the game over. She has. Brunel more than happy to help her out and converts the free throw. A double-digit lead for the first time in this game for either team. An absolutely electric eight points in 80 seconds for Virginia to start the fourth quarter. Nia Locke at seven in the second. Hasn't scored since. Bricks the shot. Valaday. Almost surprised she didn't try to get all the way to the basket. Cameron Taylor really wanted the ball in the post, but Valaday has pulled it out. And Taylor commits the foul, tripping. 
You know, it's Naya like Robinson up there. Yeah. It took a while for them to get into that offensive set. It seemed like a few players on the court had different ideas of what they wanted to do offensively there. The offensive foul has been given to Valaday, which. Okay. Dale commits the foul and lacks to Gallo. The smooth move to the basket will get a couple of free throws. Yeah, Lastigala has been able to really get comfortable in this offense. A lot of times we've seen Dale guarding her, but she's just been kind of floating when she's without the ball, trying to get into her sweet spots. But when she has the ball in her hands, Dale has done a decent job with not allowing her to just create for herself here in the second half at least. The way Coach McCombs described Lax Tagala's game, she said, you, ju you just look up at the scoreboard and she'll just have 12 points. You're not even quite sure where they've come from. She just finds a variety of ways to score. Free throw line has been one of them. Now three for four tonight. Valaday, we get the screen right this time. Miller, blows by Locke, Carol Miller. Great drive there for the driver slasher slash driver, as Coach Mox would say. But she just does a really good job of reading the defense. They're going to play low. She just takes it right down the middle. Tywo feeding lock inside out. Naya Robertson, they need this one. It won't go. She's had a tough night in her first collegiate game. Three ball. Lawson! She is feeling it from downtown in this game, her third three. Fired up is what the Cavaliers are right now. Lawson is just so comfortable. You can tell the culture has changed. She's shooting, looking to shoot more, and she is comfortable doing it. That's for sure. Lawson, she's hitting the threes, finally. She is on fire, not known for shooting, only 18% from three in previous years, but today, today she is three, four, six, and I'm sure it feels oh so good. Oh, Coach Mox knew that Lawson was a very skilled offensive player, but last year it just didn't come through. She went nine for 59 from downtown. And a whole off-season of work, and it's finally come through. You see in the bottom corner is 12 of 68 for her career. So this is a performance that could completely alter what she can bring to Virginia. Yeah, I mean, you look at her body type and, and how she's been used in previous years. It's a lot. A lot of it has been in the paint. You know, in this new system, new offense, we're seeing a one in, four out, which means four guard-like players along the three-point line. And that's where we've seen Lawson tonight. And that's where we've seen her be really comfortable with the ball in her hands. Even when she doesn't shoot the three, sometimes it looks like she's baiting her defender into thinking she's going to shoot for the drive. Mike Stigala. Mia Lax Stigala's handed it off. Jayla Thornton from the parking lot. No one saw that one coming. That was a very high arcing shot, but definitely what George Washington needed right now to finish out this game. Thornton was two for 10 before that one went in. Scorers are scorers. Dale for the answer. Missed it. Battle for the rebound. Clarkson got a hand to it, squeezed by Essence Brown. George Washington's going to mount a comeback. It has to happen soon. Virginia has dominated the second half. GW had the lead at halftime. Taiwo spins to her left. She has not been able to get the offense going. Great rebound there for Virginia. A lot of blue jerseys there in the paint, but was able to come up with it. And great pass. Woo! Oh, Lawson. Since you're talking too much about my shooting. Check that out. Doing a little bit of everything right now, and it's great to have a post partner down there who, who can stay up with you, even though Clarkson is coming off the bench. She was ready for that. Deep three. This one misses. Doing a little bit of everything. It's Lawson. Miller. Miller. 
15 to 7 to Virginia in this fourth quarter. Valaday trying to feed the post. It's been hedged out, but oh my goodness, Caden Lawson take a bow. As if the defense wasn't sure how successful she's been tonight. Just take a step out and then I'll knock it down again. Caden Lawson is doing a little bit of everything. We saw her bring the ball up the court, get it from the wing, and still be able to knock down a three. Now Carol Miller with the takeaway going coast to coast and lays it in. It's a runaway train. Virginia leads by 17. I'll tell you what, there's no other feeling like opening up your season in John Paul Jones Arena when you are playing like this, when you're knocking shots down, when you're moving. I know what George Washington's plan was coming in, but in this fourth quarter, it has been Cavalier Nation all quarter. All quarter. It is a tremendous performance from Virginia and one that Coach Mox can hang her hat on because she had to make some changes at halftime. Virginia was losing. Yeah, and then Lawson found her way. I said it before, she's been used so many different ways, but defensively, we see Carol Miller coming up with the steal. So many roles on this team, but they are all playing their roles perfectly, perfectly, perfect at the same time. And it has been balanced. So that bucket for Carol Miller, it's five different double-digit scorers on Virginia. Valaday, Lawson, Miller, Taylor, Brunel. There are eight different players that have scored at least three points in this game. On the flip side, George Washington with just one double-digit scorer, Mia Lax-Tagala. The vast majority of that in a first half that George Washington won. You saw from that graphic, they're definitely not winning the second half. A tale of two halves in Charlottesville. Lax-Tagala. A foul. As the ball was being delivered to the top of the key, Mia Lax-Tagala... Although she does lead them in points, not somebody that is a huge volume scorer. So they'll have to lean on a couple of different players if they're going to mount a surprising comeback. Yeah, they have her at the one sometimes, the two others. And so a lot of it's a lot of their offense is her running without the ball and trying to get her shots where she's comfortable. There's a shot in the corner. Too strong. Webster has contributed well today, but now she's committed the foul after missing the three. It was Clarkson tumbling to the hardwood. You know, coming into this game, we talked about the guard play for Virginia having to step it up because of how important their front court is to what they can do on offense. We see Clarkson here coming in off the bench, and she hasn't really gotten it going from scoring only three points, but her presence, her presence is felt. A player that has a bigger role to play in Coach Mox's system. Taylor, two defenders, doesn't matter. Cameron Taylor has 20. The stars come out when the light is the brightest, and she is putting on a show. Max Tagala tries to get up the shot quickly. Virginia continues to dominate the rebounding and wasting no time. It's Kaden Lawson who can do no wrong. Best of both worlds right now for Virginia. You know, coming out after only winning five games last season, you know you have to have a chip on your shoulder. And you have to want more for yourself as a player. And obviously under a new head coach, you want to take some responsibility in doing that. And Virginia has done that here in the second half. Iowa misses the layup. Virginia has 48 points in the second half. Oh, Taylor. Would have blown the roof off John Paul Jones Arena if she made that one. Would have been her second three of the game. Not normally her forte. She had... Not been given.
given the ball in that situation, but she's on the deck fighting for it. And Virginia comes out with another rebound. Valade. Another rebound. McKenna Dale misses the stick back. Can't get that one to go, but 38 points in the paint for the Cavaliers. That shows you a lot of what their emphasis is going to be this year. Pushing in transition. Here goes Valade. And she is fouled for the umpteenth time in this game. Valade is going to head to the free throw line. A tremendous discrepancy in the rebounds in this game, in the second half in particular. And that has been a huge part of this. Virginia has 27 rebounds in the second half. George Washington has 10. You know, overall, 51 rebounds. Last year, this is a Virginia team who only averaged 35 rebounds per game. Their emphasis, you know, you come from a, you talk about a coach who, who knows rebounding and defense. That's exactly what she's doing here. Bodes well for the rest of the season. Got the ACC matchup here against Wake Forest on the 13th to open conference play. A non-conference slate that will offer up, uh, offer up some opportunities to pick up early season wins. And for a team that won just five games last year, this can be a, a whole different feel to this season, especially the way this second half has gone. Yeah, I mean, early on, you get, you're getting some test here. GW, UMBC, but that first test really comes at Wake Forest. First ACC opponent for a Virginia team that is looking to write, write some new history here. Those two free throws from Valade, 50 second half points for Virginia. Lock, driving the baseline and has her first basket since the second quarter. Yeah, if you're Lock just tuning up. in, that's, you know, the unfortunate part of neither of us being in JPJ. <laughs> we run into each other every now and again. But if you're just tuning in, this was not always a blowout. This has been a remarkable second half from Virginia. Yeah, I mean, the first half we had two players for, Vir for George Washington come off the bench, but Virginia has been doing that, getting their feet, their guards, getting their feet in the paint and dishing it off or finishing at the rim. Cameron Taylor, we've talked about, we've said her name, I'm not sure how many times, but she has been so efficient. Eight for 15 tonight. This is a 15 to two Virginia run. Thornton can't break it up. Vaughn with the rebound. There would have been con some concerned faces in the Virginia program, in the Virginia fandom after the first half, which saw Virginia behind by four. But all of those concerns have been alleviated in the next 20 minutes. This is a Virginia team looking to write a new story. The freshman, Katie Pauley, her first basket. That play was written specifically for her to get her first basket, her first three, I should say, of as a Cavalier. And now, almost everybody that's played for Virginia has got a bucket. Eight of the nine players that have touched the floor. Katie Pauley from Milan, Missouri. Have to take Missouri five up north in order to head through that town where she scored over 3,000 points in high school. It's just remarkable. That's the eighth most points, 3,074, that anyone has scored in women's basketball in high school in Missouri. And that is a three-point shot she will remember and one that will cap a dominant Virginia performance in the second half. 85-59. Where did this come from? They completely took over and dominated what you said is the right word. Five players in double digits. Those are some excited fans in JPJ right now. Yeah, that's a sound you just haven't heard in a long time for this women's basketball team in JPJ. You can see what it meant to the team celebrating on the floor, finishing the game in an 18-2 run.